one of the sayings I used frequently last couple of weeks is always and forever. Yes, not as my beard, because that one is gone, but today we are going to look at what's new in the 2024.12 release of Home Assistant or last release in the 2024. But besides that, we will also be looking at some additional things that are directly related to Home Assistant, but actually have nothing to do with the latest release. So, stick around. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we dive into what's new with the latest release of Home Assistant, let's look at some other things that are new this month. Once again, we have the month of what the heck. What is month of what the heck? This is the event organized by Home Assistant devs every two years, where users such as you or I can submit their own what the heck is something not working, is something not available, etc. etc. So it's time for you to shine and submit your ideas on how to make Home Assistant better, either by making a suggestion for a new feature of Home Assistant or submitting something that will maybe enhance existing functionality. For example, we have already a couple of what the hacks added for this month. What the hack default anyone home sensor? Is there a dashboard for real time power usage? Don't we have hard coded per user dashboard sidebars? Etc. Etc. Put your thinking cap on and you have until the 31st of December to submit your ideas. And also, while you're already at it, one of the things that people usually forget is to vote for their own idea. So, for example, if we click on this one here, which was submitted today, we can see that it has zero votes, meaning that the author of the idea or suggestion didn't vote for its own idea. So, at least, vote for yourself. Next one is even better. If you run your home assistant on yellow and are currently using CM4 or Compute Module 4, there is option or there will be option to upgrade to Compute Module 5. Most of the users will not need enhanced capabilities of CM5 module, but if, for example, you want to run your local assist or you have a bigger system, then you should probably consider upgrading to CM5. This support is still not available, but will be available with Home Assistant OS 14. Even if this is not your current priority, you may rest assured that in the future, if you decide to update, you can update. There was always a possibility that CM5 module wouldn't work, but it looks like CM5 is fully compatible with the Home Assistant Yellow. But now let's jump into what's actually new in the 2024.12 release of Home Assistant. There are not that many things. One of the major things that was supposed to happen with this release, unfortunately, will be pushed to January release of Home Assistant. Plus, there will also be a change to release dates for both beta and the next full release of Home Assistant, so that they do not fall on the Christmas and the New Year's Day. But back to what's new. If you are using scenes and you want to edit scene, what would happen previously? When you click on the scene, it would automatically load up the scene and match all devices with what is set in that scene. Which is not okay if, for example, you are doing something and people are watching TV and this scene turns off the TV. Or change the lights. Now we have ability to see what devices and entities are included in the scene without applying that actual scene. Plus you can change the name, icon and area for that scene. If you're interested to see live preview, just click on live preview and it would automatically, as you can see, dim the light, but also allow you to change settings for that specific scene. So we have review and live preview. That's it. This is very simple, but also a very convenient way on you how to check what the scene actually does without applying it, but also if you want to apply it or change it, there is a simple way on how you can do that too. While officially I cannot tell you when the new Assist Harder will be released, or if it will be released, or how it works, and I may or may not have it just sitting in front of me, I can talk about the changes to the LLMs and also local intents. About six months ago, when the LLMs were introduced, you had option of either using local intents or LLMs. LLMs are awesome if you want to make your system smarter, but intents are great because they predefine specific commands and sentences. Now, with the latest release of Home Assistant, we have option to use both of them at the same time. And what does it bring? It actually brings you more and costs you less. For example, if I look at this one here, it is using open AI conversation. It can be ChatGPT, it can be something else. And we now have this line here, preferred handling commands locally. 
if we tick it on, the system will try first to match our sentence or command with the local intents, and if it fails, it will then go to LLM. If it succeeds in matching with the local sentence or local intent, it will be much faster than using LLM. But if it fails to handle it locally as an intent, it will then forward it to the LLM. And as I said, this has two benefits. First, local intents can be faster. And second of all, if it's not using remote or cloud LLMs, also there is no cost of using local or cloud LLMs. Also, H-A-S-S-I-L, yes, a mouthful, the internal engine that is processing the intents is now completely redone and it is much, much faster, really much faster. There are some languages, for example, German language, that had a lot of issues and it took a long time for it to be processed. Now it's really, really fast. But you'll have to try that one out. Like me, shaving my beard off. While at first the next change may not seem much, it really is important. It is important for everybody that is developing components, but also how users are seeing the components themselves. In 2018, Home Assistant introduced something as integration quality scale, and it divided integrations between different types. Now we have bronze, which is the minimum set for the new integrations to be included, up to silver, gold, and also platinum. But besides those four that are rated categories, we also have no score, for example, for the new integrations, internal, for example, for something that is used internally by Home Assistant, legacy, something that is old, for example, integration that was developed before any kind of a quality scale was introduced, and also custom, such as, for example, hex components. So we have four plus four, and this should allow users to better distinguish between what they can achieve or get from each individual integration. If you want to learn more about that, there is a link called Integration Quality Scale page that goes in depth and tells you what each of those integrations should have as a minimum base to be included and considered as, for example, bronze, silver, gold, and also platinum. As with each release, we also have a couple of new integrations. This time we have five of them. Achaya is a very expensive coffee scale, and if you do have that scale, maybe you should also consider making a super thanks, because $200 for the coffee scale, in my opinion, is just a bit too steep. We also have Music Assistant, which was by mistake merged into November release and then pulled out. Now we have fully internal integration for Music Assistant. You do not need to have hacks, custom component for it. It is now officially part of Home Assistant. And there are a lot of things that will be additionally developed for that one. So if you are using Music Assistant, don't forget to switch over from the hacks to internal Home Assistant integration. Plus NASweb, Nordpool and Sky Remote, if you are using Skyboxes. But as always, we do not just have new integrations. There are a lot of changes to existing integrations. For example, Smarty, Areolink, Habitica, Tesla Fleet, Bang & Olufsen, and some others too. So go check out the full documentation and see if there is something for any of the integrations that you are currently using. From other noteworthy changes, we have, for example, Horizontal Swing to Climate, Add Tone, Volume and Duration Selector for more info dialogues for sirens, Show YAML parsing errors in Automation Editor, which is great and something that was missing previously. And bunch of new units of measurement, because somebody needed to measure terawatt hours. I don't know why. Which also brings us to one additional change or improvement, and this is translation of units. Example is, for example, sensor that measures how many people are at home. Is it none, one person, two people, three, four, five or more? Or, for example, how many movies you have in your collection? So if you are into that, you now have option to measure with different units that were previously not available in Home Assistant. And the last, I would say, major change that will have zero impact on you, at least if you are using Home Assistant OS, is the change or upgrade to Python 3.13. This is something that is done internally, and you do not need to do anything specific, but for your information, yes, we have moved from 3.12 to 3.13. As with any new release, we also have some backward incompatible changes. This time is Ecovax, Glances, History Stats, Jewish Calendar, QNAP, Statistic, Stock Wizard, Template, and also Z-Wave. For example, this is for the Z-Wave. This is the minimum level or latest version that you should be currently at. Yes, it may seem that there are not that many changes in this release of Home Assistant, but as I said, one major functionality, and really, really big and major, that I cannot tell you what it is, 
unfortunately didn't make it to the December release, but if you're interested in other things that I haven't mentioned or documentation doesn't list, you can always go to the full changelog for Home Assistant, take your time, get some snacks, and spend the next couple of hours looking at what else has been merged in this release of Home Assistant. As I said, unfortunately, I cannot tell you about some of the upcoming things, but believe me, there will be at least one additional stream for Home Assistant users this year. And I'm not talking here about the December stream with the devs, there will be one additional stream. You can maybe get your hands on something new coming from Home Assistant and Nabucasa team. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video. And if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button down below. It really means a lot to me, but it really also helps with the YouTube algorithms. And YouTube is really hard to master. While you are already there, check if you are subscribed. If you are not, hit on the subscribe button so you don't miss on the next video updates and of course also some streams coming in the future. If you have any kind of a comment or a question or you have suggestion for a feature, no, for that one, go to the community forum and post what the heck in the community forum with your ideas or suggestions. But if you have any question for me, you can always post it down in a comment section below. And before I end up the video, I would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But also let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.